right, today is module four, lesson 10 on writing and expanding multiplication expressions. Yesterday we wrote expressions for addition and subtraction. Today we're going to do something very similar except for multiplication. And in fact, a lot of this is going to be reviewed because we've already spoken about a lot of this when we looked at repeated multiplication. We introduced a lot of this vocabulary and some of the concepts. So first, let's look at all the different ways we know how to multiply. If we wanted to multiply two numbers together, like 5 and 7, we would typically write 5 times 7 using that x. But now that we're starting to use variables like a and b, we can write multiplication a times b, a times b, a times b, or a times b. We know that the little dot means multiplication. We know that parentheses means multiplication. And we know that when there's no symbol, it means to multiply. How come we're starting to look at different ways to write multiplication? How come we're getting away from that x now? Why do you think we're getting away from the x? Yeah, it will confuse us as a different variable. Well, is the x another variable, like a and b? Or does x mean to multiply? So this is why we need other options for multiplication besides the x. So let's look again at these four examples. Now suppose we were going to do 5 and 7. Which one of these would not work? Which one of those could we not do? 5 times 7, does that work? Yeah, you learned that in second grade. What about 5 times 7, would that work? Yeah. What about putting them two together with no symbol, would that work? No, because now it looks like 57. It's not 57. 5 times 7 is 35. Could I do 5 times 7? Yes. Well, we know that the parentheses means to multiply. So if we're using variables, all those choices work. If we're using numbers, that one choice doesn't work. And now that we're using variables, we're going to get away from the x. Okay? So just a little review of the different ways we can write multiplication. Also a review of what we've talked about. When we looked at repeated multiplication, and we've looked at repeated addition, and we've expanded things out, and we've made them into smaller sentences, we want to write our expressions using the fewest number of symbols. We don't, why would we want to write more than we have to write? Let's keep it simple. So we want to write it the fewest number of symbols. So that means no more dot, no more parentheses. If we have the variables, we can just put them side by side because we know that's multiplication. Now some other vocabulary words that we've already talked about. Factor, what's a factor? The numbers that are being multiplied together in a multiplication sentence. So in 5 times 7 equals 35, what are my factors? 5 and 7 are my factors. What's my product? The numbers you end up with after solving. All right, the answer, which in this case is 35. We know that the quotient is the answer in division. We've already talked about coefficient, term, and variable. Here's a nice little picture, and I want you to copy this in your notes. That reminds us. So in this expression, 5x is a term, and 3 is a term. Now, in the term 5x, those get names as well. We already discussed, and this was on your last quiz, that 5 is the coefficient, and x is the variable. And because there's no symbol, that means 5 times x. So whenever we find out what x is, we can replace it and then multiply it by 5. Now, is 3 ever going to change? No. 3 is always 3. It will constantly be 3. So 3 is called our constant. Do you have all this whole picture drawn and labeled in your notes already? We cannot 
Well, we don't combine like terms. We write them using the fewest number of symbols, okay? And I cannot combine those because those are different. Remember when we had the blue socks and the pink socks? We couldn't match them even though they're both socks. Here, we can't combine those because 5x is um, a different term than 3, which is a constant. So we cannot combine those. And you will get to those, we'll get to that later on. All right, so let's take a look at the first expression now that we're in your notes, okay? So 6 times b. How can I write that with less symbols? And so it's a little less confusing, too, because that x is totally messing with my head. Very confusing. What should I write? 6b. The number or the coefficient always goes first. So now the directions also said to use math terms to describe the expressions and the parts of the equation expression. So what does describe mean? A lot of you forget to do this on your homework. What does describe mean? Like a little bit of info about. Yeah, give me some info. Explain it. So the six. Which of these math terms is the six? Which of these math terms explains what the six is? The coefficient. It's something else, too. We're not going to write full complete sentences. We're just going to write the information. What else is 6? That means 6 times b. So if 6 is one of the numbers that we're multiplying, what is 6? No. Mm -mm. It's only a constant if there's no variable connected to it. Right now, there is a variable connected to it, so it's not a constant. It's term. No. It's part of a term. It's a factor. Because that's what we're multiplying by. B. What's the B? What's the B? Uh, the B is a variable. What else is B? Factor. That's the two numbers being multiplied together. What about 6B? What can we call 6B? 6b is the term. What else? 6 times b equals 6b. So what else could we call that? Yes, very good. That's also the product because that's the answer we got when we multiply them. We don't know what b is. So I can't plug in a number and try to solve it. That's my answer. All right, let's look at the next one. 4 times 3 times h. How can I write that with less symbols? 4 then that, that dot in the middle. I want less than that. I don't want to write dots. Less than that. What else? No, I don't want parentheses. I want less. I'm not adding stuff in there. Yeah, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times h is 12h. So I have a 12, I have an h, and I have 12h. So what can we call a 12? 12 is a factor and coefficient. What's the h? You're on fire today. Great job. And what's 12H? Yep. So C, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 times A times B. And the variables are always going to be written in alphabetical order. Okay? So we have 8A, B, and 8AB. So what is the 8? The 8 is a, everybody? And a? A? B? And, yep. 
and with 8 AD. Nice job. Do they have to label? Just did the first couple. Just to introduce the vocabulary. Two more that were done. Because when I multiplied 2 times 2 times 2 times A times B, that was my answer. That's my answer in the easiest way that I could write it. I don't know what A is. I don't know what B is. So I just leave A and B. I can't multiply it any further than that. So that's my also my product. Okay? What about, oh, what, what's going to help us with this? What property do we know for multiplication? So I've got here, it was easy. 2 times 2 times 2 were right next to each other. So we knew 2 times 2 times 2 was 8. But what I got is 5 over here. I got a 3 over here. Can I still multiply them? How come? Because of the, oh, come on. What property tells me I can multiply those first? Yeah, more than property. What's property? Community property. Order doesn't matter. I can rearrange these. So how am I going to write 5 times m times 3 times p? Excellent. 15mp. I think you're getting the hang of this. 15 is your coefficient and your factor. M is your variable and your factor. P is your variable and your factor. The whole thing is your term and your product. What about E? 1 times G times W. 1 times G times W. What would that be? Be careful. We've got another property at play here. What do you think it's going to be? But if I multiply anything by 1, what do I get? You get the identity back. So if I say 1 times G times W, isn't that the same thing as just GW? Because when I multiply by 1, that's the identity property. Any number times 1 is equal to that number. Therefore, you don't always have to write the 1. Because anything times 1, you get it back again. <clears throat> now let's look at it the other way. Let's expand it. Now earlier in the module we knew that 5G was G plus G plus G plus G plus G. That was repeated addition. We're not doing repeated addition now. We want to look at multiplication expression. So how would I write 5 times G as a multiplication expression? Expanded now. Not the least amount of symbols. But expand it. Let's put it back in there. No, that G times G times G, that would be G cubed, remember? Or G to the fifth power. That means something different. This is just 5 times G. That's supposed to be a 5. 5 times G. That's it. How would we do B? And it's really confusing that we've got letters on both sides here. 7 times A times B times C. Yep. 12G? Yep. We should do 12 times G, or we could do 2 times 6 times G. Or we could do 2 times 2 times 3 times G. Those are all the acceptable answers. And that's a great question. Good way to look at it. <clears throat> what about D? If we were writing it with less expressions, we could write 24H. But we don't want less expressions. It said to expand it. So what would it be? Yep, 3 times H times 8. And what about E? What do you think? What would it be? 7 times G times 9 times H. Yep, perfect. Very good. 
Now, we want to find the product. If we have to find the product, they're telling us to... Yeah, product means to multiply. So let's multiply those together. Well, I could start by expanding it. 4 times S times 7 times G. So what's 4 times S times 7 times G? We already practiced the commutative property. I could rearrange them however I want. So how would I write that in the least amount of terms? Right, 28FG. Remember, the variables get written in alphabetical order. Do we really have to expand B, or can we just multiply that? We can multiply our coefficients. 3 times 9 is, and then our variables we write in alphabetical order. Double the product of 6y and 3bc. Well, first let me figure out what the product is. So let's multiply our coefficients with 6 times 3, 18. And then we line up our variables in alphabetical order. But they want it doubled. 36BCY is the answer. Okay? Let's stop the recording, and right now we're going to play a little game so everybody clear your desks and take out a pencil. <coughs>